Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Blender tutorial. A key component to creating 3D animations is to, well, actually be able to animate the 3D models that you create. Now, I am not a 3D artist and I'm not a 3D animator and for a very long time I've avoided getting into rigging, which is the process of creating a virtual skeleton for your 3D models so that they can move, simply because I felt it was always really complex and a bit scary to me. Fortunately, rigging in Blender is surprisingly easy to do. It's not scary at all and it will enable you to animate your 3D models like puppets and really breathe some life into them. Therefore, in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a skeleton for your 3D models in Blender. I will then show you how to easily bind the mesh of your model to that skeleton, a process usually called skinning, so that you can then animate the model simply by animating the skeleton. This is once again going to be a beginner level tutorial, but because this is already the seventh video in my beginner series, I will assume that you have watched all of the previous parts. If you haven't yet, I'm going to drop a link to the beginner series in the video description, so be sure to check that out. But now, enough talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the wonderful world of Blender. If you have been following my beginner series, you may remember this little guy. And I've already got this scene set up for you. So if you hit F12 on your keyboard, this will render out the scene. And I've already got some lights set up to, you know, make this look nice and dramatic. And as always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you will be able to download this file from our website. So simply go to surfacestudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to download this Blender file and follow along. Let's hit escape to return to the 3D view and let's say you wanted to animate this creeper. Now we have already talked about how to create keyframes and add animations. However, while we can move and rotate and scale this creeper around, we're animating the creeper as a whole and that's not really what we want to do. What if we wanted to animate just his legs or have his head move from side to side and just add some character animations to just bring this little creeper to life. If you check out the outliner, you'll see that the entire creeper is just a single mesh and that is usually what you end up with after you're done modeling a new character or a monster or something that you want to animate. In order to animate the actual body parts of this creeper or of any other character or model that you may have created, you need to add a skeleton. These skeletons in Blender are called armatures and you define them as a sequence of bones similar to a human skeleton. Right now, all we have in our scene is the creeper mesh and we now need to define an armature, a skeleton. In order to do that, on the left hand side of your 3D view in the tool shelf, which by the way, you can show and hide with the shortcut key T, in the create tab, if you go down a little bit, you'll find an option to create an armature. You can also have your cursor over the 3D view, press shift and A, and then simply add an armature and select to add a single bone. Hmm, that didn't seem to have done much. However, what actually happened is the bone got created at the current cursor location and just happened to be right inside that creeper. While that is kind of where we do want to position this bone, it's kind of annoying that we have to hide the creeper because we need to align the skeleton with the actual mesh. In order to make that job nice and easy, make sure you select the armature in your outliner. Then in the properties panel, come over to the right hand side to this little stick figure here, which is your armature tab and then you can enable X-ray mode. So this will show the bones over any meshes. And this is really great because we need to align this bone with the creeper. However, a single bone is probably not what you'd imagine the skeleton of a creeper to be. We now need to deform this bone and add other bones as required to kind of give enough detail so that we can then animate this creeper. For that, with your armature selected, simply hit tab to enter edit mode. And now you can select either the end points of this bone or the bone itself. So you can move the entire bone or you can move just the tip or just the base. Let me just undo all of that because the bone was actually sitting quite nicely to begin with. And we now need to align this bone. And I kind of want this one here to be the spine. And I want it to sit right at the base going into the head of this creeper. Now you can use five on your numpad to go into orthographic view and then use one and three and seven to jump through all of the different views or with the cursor over your 3D view, simply press Ctrl, Alt and Q or I believe it'll be Command, Option and Q if you're on a Mac and you'll go into quad view. And this one is really useful because you can see all of the sides at the same time. So now let's just zoom in a little bit here. And what I want to do is I want to grab this bone and kind of just drag it up and kind of position it right at the base of this creeper. I want the base of this bone to sit right in the base of this creeper. 
And while I could move the tip of this bone right into the head, then the entire top of this creeper would move as one piece, but I do want to be able to move the head separately. So I'm actually going to drag this down and kind of just connect it up to where his neck would be. And again, just make sure that this bone is nice and aligned in all of your views. And now what you can do with the tip of this bone selected, you can press E to extrude another bone. And this is really like a bone segment. Think of a human arm. So this will create a joint and another bone that you can move separately. And this one I'm going to drag up a little bit. And this is going to be the bone for the head. And again, make sure this is nicely aligned so that this sits really in the center of the head. Then I'm going to select the base of my bone. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do is I essentially want to give him a little hip. So I want to have two bones going to the side here from the center and then connecting the legs up just so that his legs are a little bit more flexible in the way that I can move them later. So with the base of this bone selected, let's press E to extrude another bone. I'm just going to move this over to the right here and just click and place that right there. Reselect the base, press E to extrude another bone over onto the left. Just click and confirm that. And with the tip of that bone still selected, let's just zoom in here on the right view. Press E, extrude a bone. And this one is going to be the one that actually going to connect to the foot. So I'm just going to confirm that right there. Let's reselect the tip of this hip bone here. Again, come over to the right ortho, press E. Again, we're going to extrude another bone and this one I'm going to place over to his front foot. And you can see from the top view here, you can kind of see how we're building this little skeleton right there, just for the two feet connected to the hip. So let's select the tip of the other hip. Again, go into the right ortho, press E to extrude that bone and move one forward. Reselect the tip of the hip bone. Again, make sure you have the actual tip selected. Press E, extrude that bone, and let's bring that over. And you can see how we've kind of built up this little, this little hip system for him right here. If I zoom out, you can see that this is the little skeleton that I've got set up. And the last thing I want to do, and you can do that as you go along as well, is actually name my bones, because this is actually going to be very useful. So I'm going to select the head bone here in my properties panel. Over on the right hand side, let's select this bone tab. Right now this is called bone 001, which is not useful at all. Let's just call this head underscore bone. Let's select the main bone. This is just called bone. Let's just call the spine bone. Select the left hip bone. I'm going to call this one hip underscore left. Select the right one. Let's call this hip underscore right. Let's select the bone for his right front foot. And you can obviously use any view to select these bones. Let's call this one front underscore foot underscore right. Select the left one. Let's call this front underscore foot underscore left. And let's just repeat the process for the two at the back. I'm going to call this one back foot underscore right and back underscore foot underscore left. Let's press Alt, Control and Q to return back to our single view. Let me press five as well to return to perspective view. And here we are with our little skeleton. Let's press Tab to exit edit mode. And so now we have this little armature, this little skeleton created here, right in the center of our mesh where it should actually go. And in order to animate your skeletons, you use something called pose mode. So with your armature selected, change the mode from object mode over to pose mode. And now you can select all of these bones and rotate them. And you can see that they're kind of a hierarchy from the base bone forward. So rotating this spine bone will also rotate the head bone. And the cool thing is if I select one of these hip bones here, press R and maybe press X to lock this in, you can see I can kind of jiggle his hip because again, all of these bones are hierarchy. They're joined together in like a parent-child relationship. And you can set up a whole number of different bone chains and other really cool constructs to get full power over how you want to animate your character. However, you may notice that right now moving these bones doesn't actually move the mesh and that is because we haven't yet bound the mesh to the armature itself. Fortunately, that is super easy. So there's a number of different ways to do this. The way I personally prefer to do this is simply go into my outliner, select the mesh itself, which is the creeper, and then simply drag and drop that onto the armature that you want to associate it with. This is going to pop up the set parent to menu. And here you have a number of different options for selecting your armature to form it. This controls how the skeleton or the moving of the skeleton will deform your mesh. You can select with empty groups, with envelope weights, or the one that we're going to choose with automatic weights because this is going to set up something for you automatically. And it actually works out all right in the first go. So let's just select that. And now if I select my armature, again, make sure you are in post mode, press R and rotate this bone, 
you can see that this now affects the actual mesh. I can rotate the head. Now, it's not really working the way I want to just now. Let's just select the hip bone, press R and X, and then kind of jiggle the feet. It's moving a few other parts of the mesh that I don't actually want to move. And which parts of the mesh are being influenced by the armature or by the movement of the bones is defined by the weight associated with the vertices or the geometry of your mesh in relation to the bones. In order to make this work properly, we need to tell Blender which parts of your geometry of the mesh are associated with which bones so that then the bones can move and animate and deform the right parts of your model. In order to do that, make sure your creeper mesh is selected and then change the mode from object mode over into weight paint. This is going to show you probably a blue mesh, but now you can actually select the bones and you can see that it kind of goes from red all the way through to blue. And this shows you how much influence these bones have over certain parts of your mesh. Red means full influence. So this foot bone here will move the entire foot, but it also has a bit of influence over the body. So moving this bone here, and you can do this in weight paint mode as well. If I press R with this bone selected and move it around, you can see it's kind of moving the bottom here of the body of the creeper, which is not really what I want to do. Same with the head bone here. If I actually jiggle the head, it's kind of influencing other parts of the mesh that it shouldn't really influence. So in weight paint mode, let's select the head bone here at the top. And I kind of want to paint the body blue and only have the head red so that this bone only influences the head and nothing else. For that, in our tool shelf, let's come up to the very top to the tools and you'll have this brush at the very top as long as you're in weight paint mode. And I don't want to add, I actually want to remove the influence of this bone over the body of the creeper. So let's change the blend mode from add over to subtract. I can now paint, for example, at the bottom here and you can kind of see this snap back. Let's rotate around and paint on these. And right now I have this problem that has geometry inside the head of the creeper, but I can't actually paint it. I also can't go into wireframe mode while in weight paint mode. However, what I can do is I can disable this only painting on visible faces so that I can essentially paint through this mesh. So I can now paint over the corners that are kind of inside the head of this blender. You can see the neck snap back. I'm going to do that at the bottom as well. Just paint over all of the corners to make sure there's no more influence of this head over the rest of the body. And now if I press R and move this, this should only move the head. So this bone now only controls the head. By the way, if you're kind of screwing up the position of these bones and you want to reset them with a the bone selected, simply press Alt or Option and R and that'll just snap that bone back to its original position. Let's select the body bone. And hmm, not really, I want this bone here, the spine bone to control the entire body, the main part of this creeper. So I'm going to come over to my brush, change this over to Add. And I'm going to paint this in. So this is going to make the body go fully red and I want to avoid accidentally painting over the feet because that is going to then allow this bone to control the feet. So let's just not do that. Let's make sure we have the corners painted here. But now I'm going to go back into subtract mode, zoom in a little bit and very carefully just paint over the corners of the feet because I don't want those ones to be influenced at all by this bone. So just make sure we're painting over the corners of those. And there it's a little bit orangey still. So let's just reselect the add tool and just paint that last little bit. By the way, oh, I've painted the corner there as well. By the way, you have a weight so you can define how strongly you're painting this influence. I usually have it at one unless I have a very detailed mesh and I want to have like, you know, some bones have partial influence over the vertices. In this case, it's super simplistic. I really just want all or nothing over these vertices. But again, if you have a very complex mesh, that might actually be a whole lot more complicated. Let's just press R and check this out. Cool, so this bone now really just moves the main body of this creeper. Let me press Alt and R to kind of snap this bone back as well. Let's select the hip. That looks all right. That shouldn't have any influence at all. Let's select the right hip. And again, that shouldn't have any influence. That looks all right. Otherwise, you may have to unpaint it. Let's select the foot. And yep, it has full control over the front foot. But again, just a bit over the body. So let me just unpaint that. And it really is just now a process of going through all of your bones and making sure they have influence over the right parts of your mesh. And then personally, I always like to step through this and just kind of try to move all these bones and make sure that I haven't accidentally left something unpainted and all of the bones really just control the parts of the mesh that they should. And once I've screwed all of my bones up, I like to press A 
A, just select everything and Alt and R, reset everything to the starting position. By the way, if you do have a very complex skeleton or very small bones and it's kind of hard to select them, in the properties panel, you can come over to the very right hand side to the vertex data itself. And in here under the vertex groups, you'll actually find vertex groups for all of the different bones. And this is where the names of the bones actually show up. So this is why it's important to actually name your bones properly, just so that you can then select them and find them easily, you know, when you have a more complex mesh. Obviously, this is actually quite an easy setup. Let's return back to object mode. So there's our creeper with our skeleton. Let's reselect the skeleton or the armature. And we are already in post mode, but if you're not already in post mode, make sure you go into post mode. And now if you move your skeleton, all of these bones control only the parts of the mesh that you want. And you can now animate and keyframe the position, translation and scale of these bones to actually add some animation to the character itself. This obviously only scratched the surface of rigging in Blender. There's tons of things we haven't covered yet like bone alignment, building animator friendly rigs or using corrective shape keys to deal with certain types of deformations. But hopefully you found this tutorial useful and you now know how to add skeletons to your meshes to start animating your characters and breathing some life into them. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click or tap these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.